Fresh fruit in your kitchen? Why not put it to good use in a fruit pie? I know what you're thinking. I can't make a pie. You can. Laura Grimmer from The Perfect Pear is showing us an easy way to make a pie that's crispy and fruity and it has kind of a special name. It's, it is. It's a French pie. It's called a galette. A galette. galette. A galette. Mm. And what it is, is it, I think galette must stand for easy and don't worry if it messes up pie. That's perfect. I, I like yeah. it. It's absolutely <laughs> my perfect. kind of pie. Well, one of, the, one of the reasons why I think people don't make pies is they worry that it has to be perfect or how do you make the crust and all of that kind of stuff. So this is going to make take all of the fear out of that. Okay. So the first thing that I'm also going to give you is a, is a rough estimate of how to make any fruit into a pie. So you take four cups of fruit and what I have here is just uh, peaches and blueberries which are one of my favorites. Mm. And then you're going to take about between a quarter and a half cup of flour. And what you're doing is you're compensating for the liquid there. And I happen to know these are pretty juicy so I'm going to do a heaping quarter teaspoon. If they were really juicy I might do a little bit more. Um, but then I'm just going to start with that. I'm just going to toss this in here to let the flour start to get into the veggies, into the, into the fruits, and uh, separate the slices that I've got there and that sort of thing. All right. It's sort of what they call for when you make a fruit crisp, too. And I never knew why they wanted the flour so much. It's because it's yeah. going to sweat out it, the... It thickens, it okay. absorbs the juices and, 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 and thickens the juices. So now I'm going to do a little bit. These are really sweet. So usually I do about a half a cup. I'm going to do a little less than that of sugar because I'm just not a huge sugar fan in my fruit. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is you can add any kind of seasonings that you want. I happen to love lemon zest in my blueberry or fruit. Mm -hmm. um, you can do lime zest, orange zest, if that would go with the kind of fruit that you're doing. So I'm just zesting this lemon in. And then the next thing that I'm going to do, I happen to love nutmeg, mm. especially with peaches. Mm. And so I'm just going to grate in the nutmeg I'm using the same microplane for everything. I use that for all kinds of stuff. So now I've got fresh grated nutmeg, sugar, flour, oh and man, lemon so zest. We can get all, this, well, get all this equipment at your store, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yep, the spatula, the bowl, all of this kind of stuff. The microplanes are one of my best-selling items because they are so handy to have around. You can kitchen. use them for everything. Yeah, I use them to grate garlic. Cheese. Yep. Anything. Okay. All right, so that's it. It's going to sit there for a minute while I finish the crust. So let's head over to the crust here. Now, I've already rolled this out. You can use a pre-made pie crust. Karen and I talked about this. Um, I did make this, and I put a video on my Facebook page showing how to make your own pie crust. In four okay. minutes is all it takes. Four minutes. Yep. Wow. So what I've done is I've rolled it out, and you'll notice it is not perfect. No. It's got all kinds of crusty, critchy edges, which is one thing I love about it. Now I'm going to just show you how to transfer this to your sheet pan. I'm just going to roll it up onto my rolling pin, and I'm using a paintbrush to dust off some of the excess flour. Excess flour on the, on the outside of the crust is going to make it a little bit tough, and I don't want any reason for it to be tough at all. I want it to be tender. Okay. All right, so now I've got the pie crust okay. on that. Here's your cookie sheet and with your silipat. Yep, my cookie sheet with silpat that's going to keep it from sticking, and now I'm just going to unroll it. Wow. That so that it's on there. That's a handy trick. I don't have I to do that. anything with it at all. So now okay. it's on there. It's ready to go. So now I'm just going to take the veg, the, uh, I don't know why I keep calling them veggies, the fruits, and I'm going to pile them all in the middle. And they're going to go everywhere. And, and I you want, want all my stuff. It? Yeah. Okay. And now mm -hmm. you're going to, yeah, you can actually, you can be a little handsy with it and pack them in, pack them in tight. Okay. And then we're going to make some glue. Uh, actually, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dot a little bit of butter on top. So it's exactly like making a fruit pie, except you're just doing it in this free form. This Does is the about, butter have to be cold? Um, it, it, cold or cool is absolutely fine. These are just chunks that are um, of unsalted butter. So now I've got, um, oh, I'm using the wrong paintbrush. Um, I've got heavy cream. You can use light cream. You can even use milk. And I'm going to paint the edges to make them stick. Make sure that they stick. So you, you said use heavy cream or milk, light cream. But it does it have to be whole milk or what if it was just like regular milk? That That's would be okay. Fine. Yep. I mean in a pinch you could even use water if you wanted to. It's just gonna help it stick. Yep. Okay. So now we're ready to start the folding process, which is again, it couldn't be easier. I'm just going to pull it up. Okay. Look at this. Make a fold. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm handsy with the fruit. I want to compact it, so I'm pushing it down as I go. But I'm not at all worried about what this end product is going to look like. It doesn't have to be neat. It can just be smushed on. Isn't right, that which is beautiful. a great thing that and you fabulous. can actually do with the kids because you're not going to worry that they're messing it up. Mm -hmm. You can't really mess it yep. up. Yep. And then the next step, I'm just going to paint it with a little bit more of that dairy. 
because um, that's going to give it a really pretty glaze yeah. when I bake it. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to mm -hmm. keep doing that, going okay. around. We have about 30 seconds. All there. right. So we're so last up, we're going to add some sugar. That's yes. that really nice rock sugar you have. I love this. This is the turbinado, the natural sugar. Okay. And um, it just gives it a really pretty color. It'll make it color. stay. Yep. And then you bake that? Bake it 375 for about 30 to 40 minutes until the fruit is bubbling over and you've got it, a it golden like brown that. color. Look yep. at this. It's I the mean, finished product. Go right in. Should we cut it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should we cut it? Should we cut it? <laughs> I've got a spoon. Oh my gosh, can you imagine one. like that would just be wonderful for breakfast the next day too. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks okay. delicious. Mm -hmm. All right. Bite. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Scott, I know you're going to want to take a bite, so I will read this yeah, out. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, try it. All right. You're going to find practical and beautiful wares for the kitchen table and, at the, and bar at the Perfect Pair in Chester. The address is 51 Main Street. It's a place that you're going to want to visit. It's so delicious. All right, Laura also teaches cooking classes. You'll find more information on that online at, the perf at perfectpairct.com. The address is right there on your screen. All right.